So when we start to understand that there's a no thing, this no thing moves into the imagination of a human being. Any idea that's accepted through the imagination will then move into the subconscious mind of the human being. Once it's in the subconscious mind, it'll alter the behavior. That person will then release a, a, a force, attractive force, and everything will start to move into it. So what people want to understand <clears throat> how to create different results is it all starts with building a new image. Welcome to Tried and True with a Dash of Woo, where we blend rock solid tips with a little bit of magic. I'm Renee Bowen, your host, life and business coach and professional photographer at your service. We are all about getting creative, diving into your business and playing with manifestation over here. So are you ready to get inspired and have some fun? Let's dive in. Happy May 1st, guys. Welcome back to Tried and True with a Dash of Woo. I am your host, Renee Bowen. This week, I have Dave Conway on the show. And Dave is kind of a badass in the coaching industry. So this is a really fun episode. We we talk a lot about manifestation. Dave's coached over 25,000 entrepreneurs and coaches worldwide. He's considered one of the world's best mindset mentor is working today. As the founder of Conway Consulting, Dave helps people discover the power within their minds to turn that power into results, unlike anything they've ever experienced. And all of this and much more has been made possible through the study and practice of manifestation. And so that is what we are talking about today in sort of a different way than you maybe have heard it before. But I know you're going to get a lot out of it because he's such a super interesting guy. And I loved our conversation. I think that this is really timely. Um, you know, we are getting into, I don't know about you, but the last week or so has definitely felt more like movement, life, energy. I know there's a lot going on in the world and there's not a lot, you know, we can do about all that, but I do feel like there is, there's some positive change on the horizon and maybe that's just the optimist in me, but I refuse to change. Um, I'm going to continue looking for the good because, you know, sometimes that's all we can do. Um, I just feel like yeah, the energy shifted a little bit and maybe it's the weather. Maybe things are just finally starting to get a little bit warmer and, you know, maybe we're seeing a little bit more sun. Um, even out here in California, like we have had the wettest spring. I just saw something not long ago that said we, we've gotten more rain than Seattle this year, which is insane. We're out of the drought, so that's fun. And we have some amazing wildflowers and some gorgeous green, which is not going to stick around, I know. But I'm trying to appreciate all of that. And even all the rain days that I have had to reschedule for my clients, that's not been fun. It's been so hard, like so many sessions I've had to just reschedule because of rain. It's crazy. But yeah, I hope that you guys are feeling optimistic. Um, I always love to hear from you. So if you want to chat with me, hit me up on Insta at Renee Bowen, shoot me a DM. I am always happy to chat with you there. Sometimes my little robot Renee will answer for me, but I promise I will respond, the real me as well. Just a quick little blurb. Um, I am going to be changing some things up with regards to my membership Elevate pretty soon. So and I'm not going to really announce those changes yet, but they're coming. If you are wanting to join Elevate, I would go ahead and do it now because I'm going to be changing some things and possibly raising the price. And if you join before that happens, you're locked in to the rate that it is now, which is only $49 a month. So um, yeah, if it's been on your list and you've been thinking about it, now's the time. That, that information is listed for you below in the show notes. It's an incredible value. You guys, you get coaching from me, you get you know, monthly content. We talk so much about marketing and you get access to me a lot and it's only 49 bucks a month. So um, definitely check it out. I will, I will put that below for you guys. And um, I'm also going to be changing the upper level of Elevate, which is called um, Evolution. And that is going to be shifting a little bit too. And enrollment is going to start soon for that. So put those things on your radar. And uh, if you're not in my free Facebook group, by the way, for high school senior photographers, I'll list that in the show notes. Um, we have about 15,000 high school senior photographers and photographers in general in there. And I am going to be doing some more lives. So one of the things that I really want to focus on this summer is popping in there more, doing some more education in there. So if you are interested in 
marketing and strategy and, you know, all of those things business related, you want to definitely um, check us out and join that free group. Lastly, I do still have a couple of spots open for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you want to get in touch with me ASAP because I tend to not take on as many clients as we head into summer and fall because I get really busy. Um, so definitely reach out ASAP. If that is on your radar, I will put that link. It's just renee.io slash book a call. We have to hop on a call for us to see if we're a good fit to work together. And I can kind of outline everything that's included for you. And you can let me know what you're dealing with. I'll let you know if I can help. And if I can, I'll point you in a direction. If I know that direction, um, I'm not going um, to, it's not a hard sell into a program, right? If it's not right for you, I will tell you. So Definitely do that soon, though, because I will be probably closing my coaching books at least uh, fairly soon. Okay, let's get into this episode with Dave Conway. Hey, guys, welcome back to the show. And today I am joined by Dave Conway. You guys are in for a treat. He's awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dave. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. I'll definitely accept any podcast that's called Tried and True with a dash of woo. Yeah, I know that, you know, you definitely uh, play in that arena as well. And we're going to, we're going to dive right into that. So I just kind of want to start off with a real simple question. Um, what event or series of events took you from $5,000 a month to $550,000 a month? <laughs> what does that journey look like? <laughs> just real uh, simple. <laughs> well, it's a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster. Uh, that journey started in May of 2017, and uh, many, maybe a lot of your audience is familiar with this gentleman. His name was Bob Proctor. Uh, I was down at a, an event in Los Angeles, California called the Paradigm Shift. Uh, at the time when I bought my ticket to it, I did not know what a paradigm uh, shift even was. I didn't even know what a paradigm was, so it's a good thing I went to learn. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So anyway, when I was down there, he kept asking, uh, everybody in the audience, like, you know, what do you want? What do you really, really want? And, you know, your audience could ask himself that too. What do you want? Like, what do you really, really want? What do you want to see happen? And I took my imagination off its leash for five minutes. And in that five minutes, at the time I was a carpenter earning five grand a month. And in that five minutes, I wrote out, I wanted to earn a hundred grand a month. So 20 X my income. It's a lot of money. And I wanted to move into the personal development world. And I wanted to mentor people all over the world. And I wanted to become world class at it. And I wrote that down. And that was the starting point of massive, massive shifts in my life. So it took me, it took me 31 months to go from the five grand to the hundred grand. And over the next two years, then I started going over 200,000 a month, 300,000 a month. Um, and then in 2023, we started crossing that half a million dollars a month very regularly. Amazing. So what do you think? I know it's like you said, it's, it's a roller coaster and it's definitely a journey and each step leads to that next step. Um, what was it about being there? First of all, like being in that room, like what, what was it about um, was it something that you just decided? Was it then habits you put in place? Or did you sort of like become this different version and then the habits, you know what I mean? Like, what was that process like for you? It's always interesting to me mm, to find like out. Like you're talking about the room, like when, what, like in 2017? Yeah, yeah. That catalyst, oh, right? Like, so what was it about pain. that? <laughs> it was painful. It was, it was the most painful weekend of my life. Mm. You see, I'd actually, um, my whole entire life, I've always had um, just like a feeling. I, like, I, I don't see like colors or anything like that. Uh, or, you know, I don't see visions in the sense of like where my, my physical eye transforms things. Uh, but I've always known there was a spiritual component to life. I always just had a feeling that there was like a power, there was a God, that there was deeper and my whole life, I've always had an ability to just read through my intuition what a person was like. Uh, and this got me in a lot of trouble at school, actually, because some of my teachers, I just like was like, no, nah, you, you, you don't. got." So I got in a lot of trouble for it growing up. Uh, <laughs> but I've always felt that way, except in 2018, when I sorry, when I was 18 years old, I ended up seeing Bob Proctor. So I'm 40 years old now and I ended up seeing him. Uh, 
And I'd never anybody talk like that before. Mm. So, but I'd never been able to make the shifts with it. I'd never been able to make those changes that he was talking about. So when I went back to see him in 2017, so that was 2002, I would have saw him. So that's like 15 years later. Um, I'd been trying to create success in my life, Renee, for, for those 15 years, wasn't able to do it. And what I, what I was missing was number one, like a serious goal. Now, a goal is more than just, just a want, right? So, well, what is a goal? Let's start with that. What is a goal? Yeah. Well, a goal is an idea that you really want. A goal is simply an idea. And it's easy to want, but you have to successfully transfer that uh, idea into a desire. So the first thing I was missing was I didn't have a serious goal that I could make a clear mental picture of. And then the second thing that I learned on that weekend was the paradigm. So regardless of how hard a person works, if you do not change the images inside your mind, inside your consciousness, subconscious mind, um, you ain't never going, it ain't never going to happen. Something will always seem to happen to set you back. And so that, that weekend I made a decision. I acted on the decision and I uh, built a clear mental picture of the man I wanted to be. And that's what changed my life. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, we talk about that a lot. And you said it earlier, too. Like, I uh, I get on calls with people all the time. And that's one of the first things I'll ask is, like, what do you really want? And most people can't really answer that. No, um, for anybody. Yeah, for anybody in your audience, like, if anybody really is serious about knowing that, like, if you don't have a clearly defined goal, your goal should be to get a goal. Mm -hmm. Like, that's got to be the number one thing. Um, Earl Nightingale said this. He's like, he said, it'd be wise to sit down for an hour, a day, a week, even an entire month, just to find out what you really want. It must be yeah. important if he's telling you to dedicate an entire month if you have to. So yeah, because you can't go anywhere if you don't know where that is. No, and so many people in, don't have it. That's right. The thoughts in your mind uh, lead you, like they guide you all the time whatever you think that's sort of if you're thinking about having a coffee you'll wind up getting a coffee like it's really just that simple so as you start to think bigger things um you'll start to move towards bigger things so if anybody is struggling with that what they can do i give them a challenge so for the next 14 days grab a pen grab a paper every morning if you can get up before the kids wake uh so yeah you do have to get up 10 minutes before early and what you do is on the top of paper just write out what do i really want what do i really want and whatever comes out just write it down. Do this consistently for 14 days and you'll start to see repeated uh, repeated wants coming on the page and then you'll get yourself a goal. I love that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, maybe they have a, an idea that they're, it'll just drop in or you, like you said, like, you know, it'll just, you're just always led. You're always led by something. So being intentional with that thought though is so key. And I've definitely seen that for myself. Um, and, and even like as a partnership too, right? Like, so those of you who are married or you have a partner, I think it's also important to get clear about your own goals, but also like if you're working on something together, like if you've got something that you want to work on uh, something, you know, in the future that you want together, I think it's important to get some clarity around what that is for you guys as a team as well, or if, you know, your company, if you've got employees, if you've got things like that. Um, and I know you coach, you know, a lot of people, like you've coached what over 25,000 people over the last few yeah, years. So you... Yeah. Last year, last year, we, I was spoke to 25,000 people just last year. And we've, uh, that's through the events. And then we, um, I've personally had over 1,250 a high ticket client. So these people range from 10,000 to a hundred thousand uh, yeah. investments. Yeah. So you see the inside, the under, under the hood of a lot of businesses and uh, entrepreneurs. That's fair yes. to say. And I'm telling you, it's all mental. So mm -hmm. I have done over, I've personally done over uh, 10,000 one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. And I'll tell you, you start to learn a lot about human beings that you'll never find in a book. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's all mental. It's always mental. Like your our problems are always mental. Therefore, all if our problems are always uh, mental, then our solutions must also be mental. And I think as uh -huh. soon as people start to wake up to that, um, they're, they're they can change their life.
I agree. That's why I do what I do. I mean, you know, I started with a degree in psychology and then I fell into photography and then I fell back into coaching because it was always like a first love of me of like, you know, working with people, but in, in a very different way than I had, you know, intended to years ago. Um, but I've always been like a self-development fanatic junkie, for lack junkie. of a better word. Junkie. Yeah. A junkie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even in like the early nineties, you know, and, uh, what I found was all these, you know, creatives and photographers were coming to me for like business coaching and like, how do you do this and how do you do that? But it was all here. It was all, it was all mental, like the stuff that was really holding them back. I mean, I could definitely give you a blueprint, but if you're not going to like figure out, fix really what's going on up there and, 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 you know, deal with that, it won't matter. The strategy nope. stuff won't, you won't implement it. You won't do it. And so I know that, yeah, from looking at everything that you do, I know that's a really big factor. So you talk a lot about manifestation and I do too. I would love to kind of hear from you. Um, I guess like, so what are some of the common misconceptions about manifestation that you encounter and how do you address them? <laughs> well, the first one is that it isn't real. <laughs> like yeah. what a crock of shit. Can you say that word on the? Oh yeah. 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 yeah okay. You can curse on this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, <laughs> I should ask before I say it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like some people think that it's not real. Uh, like it's some like, you know, a dash of woo, like woo woo or whatever. Yeah. Well, this is just a bunch of nonsense. Um, there's even people in the world here now too that, you know, poo poo, like the, the idea of law of attraction. Um, well, what, what, are, what are they talking about? The law of attraction is the binding force of the entire universe. Mm -hmm. Everything is bound through the law of attraction. It's the, the law of attraction is a secondary law. The law of vibration is a primary law. So whatever the nucleus of it is, there's only one form of energy. We've Science has already proven that. So anything that uh, gathers around the nucleus from a pen to your hair, to your results, to this lip chap, to this piece of wood, to, to, to the desk you're on, to computer on, it's all one energy bound through vibrations. So through the law of attraction. Um, so yeah, one of, my, one of my missions in life actually is to make manifestation logical, to mm -hmm. show it from a perspective and it's and it works amazing the perspective that i share um that it's so obvious that all we do all day long is manifest so everything starts like so there's a creative process to everything in in life so it all starts with the no thing so you've got this no thing you call it space higher power spirit whatever it is you want to call it holy spirit god anything you want to call it. but what we need to understand about is that it's not formed so Albert Einstein said that matter is perpetually expanding into nothing, which is kind of like your, your, your reasoning mind can't compute that actually. Like we actually can't compute it. So the human mind can only compute um, in the third dimension, which mm -hmm. is length times width times height. The fourth dimension being time. So anything above the third dimension, the human mind can't process. That's why we talk in stories, metaphors, uh, examples, analogies. Uh, we show images to each other. That's because those are all we can understand that through the 3D. So when we start to understand that there's a no thing, this no thing moves into the imagination of a human being. Any idea that's accepted through the imagination will then move into the subconscious mind of the human being. Once it's in the subconscious mind, it'll alter the behavior. That person will then release a, a force, attractive force, and everything will start to move into it. So what people want to understand <clears throat> how to create different results is it all starts with building a new image. This is the most important thing. Like if you were to ask me, um, what's the most important lesson you've ever learned from all your mentors? Uh, building an image, image building, become an image builder because that's where it all starts. Because once that image is impressed onto the sub, everything will start to change. Yeah. So it's about becoming a different version of yourself <laughs> over and over again. Yes. So at the events, like we've got, um, we, we do a fair bit of events all over the, all over North America and we're heading to Las Vegas uh, t -t 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 next Sunday. Uh, no, no, the day after Easter, Monday, okay, Monday, yeah, and we're going to Las Vegas for a week for an event, uh, we're hosting an event there, a manifestation event, and at that event, um, I will be getting everybody on the second night 
to when we take them out for dinner, uh, they are going to have a wake for the person that arrived on the event on day one. So we just say a silent prayer for that person. Uh, you know, God bless them, but you know, T T Y N, talk to you never. They got to go. So true manifestation is manifesting a new version of yourself. The only reason that a person would ever get a goal is because for, if you're ever going to change, you need something worth changing for. So you get your goal solidified. Once you get your goal solidified, you say, who's the man, woman, or person that is naturally producing that result? You see, what people have to understand is that there is a version of you that already exists inside of you that will naturally produce that result. Mm -hmm. That'll naturally do it. So I used to work a hell of a lot harder working five, earning $5,000 a month than I used, than I do currently earning half a million a month, like way harder. Why? I had to change my belief system. I had to manifest a new belief system by design, by design. It's amazing. Like I could talk about it all day. I know. And I love it. That's, I, this is like, so, so my jam. Um, and you know, stuff that I talk about all the time as well and like implement in my own life and have over, you know, the course of many, many years, I've seen it personally. And also obviously with clients of mine. Um, and so I love, I love that sort of like melding, like you said, the logical making this manifestation, you know, a logical thing, because a lot of people do have this connotation about it, that it's inaccessible. It doesn't exist, whatever. But to that, I say, first of all, too, this whole thing, like, how do you think this even, like, we're literally on a floating rock. Like, how, what? Like, none of this is real. <laughs> like, none of this, no. none of this is as big as we think it is, right? Like, we, our perception is really what determines the reality that we're in. And so why not, why not be a little delusional about what you want? in life, yes. but so many people are held bound by the 3D. So when you encounter that, and I guess like by the time someone comes to your event though, right? Like if they're going to your events, they are already, you know, like on board with this idea, let's say, right? Like they want to, um, to understand it better. They want to at least have some tools, all of that. And, you know, that's wonderful because when someone wants it, that's like that sweet spot I find. What I see a lot too in my communities is people who really are open. And I say like, if you are drawn to it, if you're hearing this, like there's a reason for it. I'm a big believer in that. Like you're meant to hear and you're meant to like, things are going to be presented to you if it's meant for you. But then they meet with this resistance, right? So um, when you come across people like that, who are very much like, yes, this sounds like a phenomenal idea, right? And I can get on board with this, but, and then there's always their, but like, what do you find um, helps move people through that resistance to it? Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's like a couple, couple things. The first is um, at all the events, I would, I would challenge the idea of uh, that they're already into it. So they'll the people that come they'll they're they're into the idea of earning a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars a month or 10 million whatever their goal is they're into that idea it's the same it's the same it's the same idea around like sure i'm 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 into the idea of looking like a greek god like i'd love you know like have an eight pack and whatever the hell like i'm into that idea that's a great idea you know sign me up uh, but then when I have to find out <clears throat> that I need to change, it's like, oh, okay, well, hang on a second. <laughs> you know, very, very different story, uh, really different story. So when, this is almost like a sales question in a way, isn't it? That you're mm. kind of in, in a strange way that you're like- Well, it's all related, you know, is, like yeah. honestly, it is. Yeah, exactly. So I said at the last event to uh, my my leading, my top coach there, Wendini, I call her, her name's Wendy, but I call her Wendini because she is magic. That's and awesome. uh, yeah, she's a, she's brilliant. And uh, anyway, Wendy, I said, Wendy, when we started, I said, Wendy, how many people know what they're signing up for? And she's like, none. Hmm. None of them actually know. You see, everybody wants more. But when you start to learn a process, it's like, oh, actually changing. It's a very different story. Very different story. So how do I deal with a person? Are you saying how do you deal with a person that's um, 
kind the of resistance. Push yeah. Push like how to move back. We're basically move through their resistance, you know, like what would, what would that sort of look like? And obviously it'll look like different things for different people, but, um, you know, I usually see that resistance as that, that unconscious programming, right. It rears up because yeah. it's like, you know, we've all, we've all been programmed against our will, um, as kids. And then yes. when we do try and make these changes, cause you're, it, it is a change and it's natural for that unconscious part of your brain to pop up and go, Oh, no, 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 no. This is not what we do to stay safe. This is not what we do to stay alive. Like why are this is dangerous, right? So like, it's that perceived danger. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of different ways people can move through that. What do you feel like is really effective for people to do, to work through well, that? The, the first thing is like, don't resist anything. So if I was like, for example, let's say like I was speaking with you today, or I was speaking to on a sales call or a coaching call or, 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 or any human being at all. <clears throat> um, don't resist anything. Okay. Cause what you resist persists. Mm-hmm. So when you're trying to force something out of your life, it's, you have to let something out of your life. So I don't know if maybe some of your viewers won't, won't be watching this on video, but right now what I'm doing is I'm holding a uh, piece of wood in my right hand above my head and then below around chest height, I've got my left hand. So if I want to move this from here to here, all I need to do is let go. Okay. This, this is called gravity. All right. So once you let go of something, you'll instantly make a space for that something. So when you're communicating with people, the key is you have to get them into their imagination. You have to move them into their imagination so that they consent to a new idea. So it's not about like, oh, I don't have to do that. Okay. No, you just have to consent to something different. So you, you don't have to force anything on anyone. You don't have to cross a line. They're not allowed to come over your line. You're not allowed to go over their line. Uh, but it's more about don't resist anything. Don't resist your own growth. Don't resist your own growth. When somebody else maybe is not enjoying your presence or not enjoying the words that you're saying, um, understand that that's really not them. Like every time you meet a person, understand that you're not meeting a person. What you're meeting is a conditioned mind. Mm -hmm. In behind that person, almost imagine a fence in behind that person, in behind that conditioned mind over that fence, there's a spiritual being and that spiritual being is wired up to do one thing and one thing only to expand, to grow. That's all it wants to do. You can learn a lot from nature. You can learn a lot from observing the universe. It's in a perpetual state of multiplication and expansion. If a human being were a part of the universe, therefore we must obey the same laws. So don't take anything personal. When you meet a person, you're meeting a conditioned mind. You have to get over that mind and get into their heart. Once you get into their heart, you'll find that the fence just drops down. Yeah. Tuning into that heart center is really powerful, I have found. Um, and, you know, they always kind of say, like, gratefulness is the gateway to that. Like, if you're having a hard time accessing that version to try and at least put yourself in a place of service or place of gratefulness. And that could be like a, like a stepping stone to that, that larger part of yeah. it, because it kind of opens up that frequency a little bit. Do you find that too? Well, it doesn't just open up the frequency. You lit, they go to the frequency. Yeah. Right. And it's like, you have to find out what's the motive behind this person. Are they, are they financially motive motivated? Are they love motivated? Are are they currently self-preservation? Does the idea of power and fame motivate them? Like if you don't think power and fame is a huge motivator for the large majority of the earth, then just go on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and you'll find that it's a serious, serious motive of people. Yeah. Um, is it fear? Is it liberty? Is it freedom that they're after? So the more you understand about people, you know, I found that the more I understand about me, the more I understand about you. Because yeah, sure, like I might be a man, you might be a woman, and I might have brown hair and you might have blonde hair and I might have brown eyes, you might have blue eyes. Uh, but inside we're actually all the same. We all are, we're mm -hmm. all governed by one law, which is the law of growth. So find yeah. that growth part of them. And if you're trying to force your way in, they'll, they'll reject you. They'll reject you. Mm -hmm. Become curious, invite them across it and, and bring them, fascinate them, make them curious, make them curious about themselves. Yeah. Curiosity. I love that. You know, just kind of getting curious just in general and asking the right questions to yourself, 
daily, that could be a really powerful. mm -hmm. So as far as that goes, like, are you really big into, um, all these habits, right? So we hear a lot about that. We hear a lot about like, okay, shifting the mindset, stepping into this other version of yourself, this, you know, that energetically exists and aligning with that. Um, do you believe that there has to be a lot of structure and habits around that or can it be easier? Oh, it can be way easier. Just get yourself an obsession. <laughs> you get you get yourself an obsession. You don't got to really form that many habits at all. Mm -hmm. Like there's only four core habits to become financially free. Always have a goal to be multiplying your income, however much you earn. Uh, always have a goal that you're saving, how much you want to save through a period of time that you can save or invest. Uh, always have a goal to be giving at all times, be building yourself into the person that donates X amount of dollars. And then the fourth is reduce your debt. So taxes or debt. So there's your four financially free habits. Well, there you go. Now everybody knows, but what's the motive behind it? Who's the person going to produce it? What are you going to do with the information? You know, um, who's going to guide you? You know, I had a mentor say once uh, in my early 20s, he said, Dave, the mind is a scary place. Don't go in alone. Everybody needs a Sherpa. And he said, especially you, especially you need one because you're, you're, <laughs> you're in rough shape. Um, yeah. So as, as we start to grasp the idea that we can change, that there's a simple process to change and that we're not the ones that have to change. That's the, that's, so I'm going to reword that. Okay. This is a bit advanced mindset. This is a bit, this more advanced mindset here. Um, the, there's a power that grows the tree. The tree does not grow itself. There's a power that grows the grass. There's a power that's keeping your butt in your chair. If you're sitting in a chair, there's a power that's keeping the ceiling above on, uh, in your current room that you're in. There's a power that the sun sets and, and rises. You see, nature has no effort. It appears effortless. When you start to embody the images of the new identity of the person that you would like to be, you will find that there is a power that will come to your aid that will naturally give you a, a state known as grace. Your pro our problem is always in the resistance. It's in the attachment. Once you start to let go, you'll find that this power will take over your imagination. It'll take over your health. It'll take over the whole thing. Our only job as human beings is to form clear mental pictures. That's it. Yeah. That's all we do. I have clients that go from 10 grand a month to half a million. I, I have clients go from 200 grand a month, three months later, they're in 400 grand a month, all through image building. Like there's a power that grows the tree. So start to ask yourself, what's the difference between me and the tree? Well, the only mm -hmm. difference is that you can choose what you become. The tree is not allowed to choose. But I'll tell you here and now, the exact same laws that grow the tree are the exact same laws that will expand your life. Yeah. The religious people say giving your will over to God. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is so difficult for people, I find, too, right? Like, so I always say, like, life is just like a series of letting go, right? And it's pretty much the key to kind of everything is letting go of all kinds of things, whether it's that old version of yourself, control. Uh, we have that need for certainty as humans. Like we really want to know that that's going to happen. And then, like you said, we spend a lot of time up here, which is not, <laughs> not the best. And uh, as, as creatives, I find too, you know, if you have an extra spicy brain and you tend to have a, a very active, let's say, brain with lots of imagination, well, that can be a superpower, but left unchecked, Weak will. it could be your detriment. Yeah, you I had know? A client, yeah, I had a client once that had a very, very, um, let's say, like 
I don't know, developed imagination. I don't know if he consciously developed it or not, but he had a, he had a stimulated imagination. Hey, it was, it was active, an active one. That's the word. He had an active imagination. And when he started working with me, I said, I said, wow, I said, you really have a great imagination. I said, but your will is very weak. Like your willpower is very, very poor. Um, I said, you gotta, you gotta tighten up your focus, your concentration. I said, and if you don't, you, you'll suffer. And, you know, he was going to start a new world and he went off and after a week he got rejected three times, came back, was furious with me. And I said, and he said, Hey, I, I, I want a refund for this. I said, no, I'm not giving you a refund. I was like, I told you what we had to do. I said, I will work with you. I said, we'll develop your will. Just refuse. He thought, he thought that just having the idea was enough. It's not mm -hmm. enough. You need to embody it. So I find that most people like how I, I my problem was I was too busy being me and if I was too busy being me, I had to change that to getting busy to being the person that I want to be. And it's just a one, it's just a day at a time practice. It's, it's very, very simple to become rich. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It's very simple to become happy too. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I believe that hundred percent. Um, but it, it, it is really that practice. It's like, like you said, like that practice of continuously releasing and letting go of that so that you do make more room for that expansion. Um, in indirectly, like, let's talk for a second about sales, right. Okay. Um, and put it into some, I guess, 3d sort of, uh, context for people, right. Because, you know, the more I always, I always say, and I always believe that, you know, your business is definitely a reflection of how you feel, what's going on inside. Um, and so even if you, you can have the best intentions, that's why a lot of people, like you were talking about before, I believe a lot of people have years of being on like, let's like a self-development journey or trying to better their lives or whatever they want to call it. And they, they just kind of keep hitting up against a wall or a ceiling um, mm -hmm. because they're not embodying it, right? They're not like letting go of that because there is, it is, it is like, um, a, a saying goodbye and like a death, like you said, of oh, yeah. rest in peace mm -hmm. and moving through that is super scary for a lot of people. Um, but in terms of sales, I, I find that sometimes it's almost easier because it's motivated by money probably, right? Is that people are able to come in through that lens of, well, I do want to make more money and I want to learn how to be better at selling. And I always tell creatives too, like if you, because a lot of photographers, a lot of creatives will fall into what we do by accident because they're good at it. They make it look easy, whatever. And then they sort of just fall into it. And then before they know it, they're like, oh, I actually have to know how to run a business if I, you know, want to make money at this. And that's their catalysts who realize that this is sales. This is sales. And there's this, you know, slimy connotation about sales that a lot of people have this like programming about. So through that lens, they're able to at least approach it. Um, and I think that you touched on that a little bit too. And you said like people come to the events like, yeah, it's, yes, I want to make more money or I want to have a better business or whatever, but it's the catalyst that actually gets them in there to make the change. Um, so in terms of sales, what do you think? Um, and I, I mean, <laughs> I know what I, what I would say, but what, what do you feel is one of the most important um, tools of mindset or a manifestation that comes into practice with that sales process? Like what, what do you think really holds the, um, pulls the lever, I guess. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we, uh, like when you're having a conversation with somebody or just like shifting a belief around it or. Yeah. Well, um, I've kind of both, I guess, because, you know, first they have to kind of shift the belief within themselves to make that shift mm -hmm. to, to sell. Cause a lot of people have that programming, like I said, of. Well, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has we some kind have. of programming, everybody. but a lot of people have a programming that sales is bad. You know what I mean? Sure. Or sales is gross. 
whatever. Um, and so they, ha they feel very guilty. This is something I see a lot. They feel very guilty about charging people, even like what they know they need to be charging. They feel guilty about it. So in that, in that respect, what would you, where would you go with that? I just did a seminar in Toronto uh, two weeks ago called Money and Guilt. Mm -hmm. And it sold out in three days. Boom, like that. All women. Oh, yeah. Not a, that's what not I was going to say. Do you find that it's mostly men? I mean, mostly women, because that's what I see in oh, my yes. communities. Yes. Yeah. My client base is about 85% women, too, if not mm -hmm. by design, by just, wow, interesting. That's what's happening. Um, all right. So what we got to understand is that that perception is not... Um, it's not like unvalidated. It's a pretty valid perception because most salespeople are very, are their amateurs. Okay. They're terrible. And they're, they don't understand the basic laws of human contact where every human being on the planet wants to be left with the impression of increase. So like everybody wants to be around people that are going to facilitate their expression. Nobody wants to be taken from. So everyone wants to be given to and serve, but no one wants to be taken from. Right. That's why we got locks on our cars and locks on our doors. Why? To protect our stuff. So everyone has an automatic self-preservation mechanism to protect. And there's just too many salesperson sales process encounters uh, with amateurs that validate that it's an icky or a gross thing. So if you've got that a part of your paradigm now, not everybody does, but the large majority of people do. So if, if you understand that, that, let's say I'm going to throw a number out of there. This isn't an accurate number. I don't mean like data or anything behind it. Let's say 85% let's say of people in the world have that paradigm that sales is icky. So the chances of you coming out of that grouping of people, well, it's 85 out of 100 that you've got it. If you want to make it, you have to reconcile that. So what we want to understand is that sales isn't doing something to someone. Sales is doing something for someone. So what you want to do is you want to create an environment that is conducive to the unfoldment of a desire. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. You have to learn how to create an environment that is conducive to the unfoldment of a desire. Because every, every sale you've ever made and every sale you ever will make has all went through from the imagination into a desire that person has purchased because desire controls the movement of the body. Mm -hmm. Now, when you understand that, that your job is just to facilitate desires and the better you get at framing up a conversation or an environment where that person is allowed to go to take themselves to the next level, because this is the truth. You don't sell anyone anything. What you do is you facilitate that person expressing their desires with and through you. That's all that we do. So even the idea, oh, I sold that person. Okay, fine. That's fine. If, unless if you don't want to look any deeper, but the truth is you didn't. What you did is you facilitated a desire. So if someone comes to you and they want something, yet they're afraid to act on it, well, it's the salesperson's job to help that person overcome that fear. It's actually the salesperson's job to help that individual overcome the objection because it's the objection that's going to rob the dream. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. The objections all stem from the paradigm or the current reality. Your current reality stems from your paradigm. So we got to go back over that fence, get into their heart and say, hey, it's okay. You can do this. And there's all kinds of techniques for that. When I, when I discovered, um, can I share a story? Yeah, of course. Okay. So here's a, I have two, two, two sales stories that changed my life. So I started uh, doing this professionally in 2017 and I'll never forget this. It was November 20, November 30th, 2017. I did my first ever talk that day. I installed a kitchen and made $400. So I just make 50 bucks an hour as a carpenter. And that night I did a 90 minute talk and I made $20,000 and my God. Uh, did that ever change my perception? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Like, that just can't okay, hang on it. That just don't happen. But I liked it. And I was like, I'm going to keep doing these things. So I started, I booked that, that uh, room every day. Every, I think it was the last Thursday of every month um, for a year. And I started doing these talks at the last Thursday of every month for a year. 
And there's this lady who used to kept coming. Her name was Robin. And Robin would always come up to me and be like, oh, that was great and wonderful. And then she would leave, never purchasing like the mentorship. And it was the fifth time that Robin came and she came up to me and I just said, oh my God, I'm not talking to this woman. So I was just like, I don't, I'm not, there was a sales lesson in here. I just didn't fully get it. Um, I said, I put my hand out and I was like, I said, Robin, I'm not talking to you. You've been here five times now. Are you in or are you out? Now, I wasn't talking about necessarily in or out with me. Are you in or out with you? Because mm -hmm. you just keep saying the same things over and over to me. And I don't have to give you my life. I've got a wife. I've got family. I've got people that want to be around here. Not just people that want to just hang out at the side of the pool, right? Uh, so she said, I'm in. Now, that was a huge awareness that I didn't realize at the time, that if you just demand a decision, you'll get a decision. If you permit indecision, you will receive indecision. You are not helping the person. Get them to make a decision, yes or no. Yes or no. Or I'm, if I'm not sure, okay, what do you need to know to get it to a yes? So anyway, Robin came into the mentorship. 10 weeks in, she said her life had changed more in 10 weeks than it had in 20 years. On the 11th week, she called me up. She was just stressed out. She's like, hey, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. And uh, she said, I just bought this package. Now, at the time, my mentorship was five grand. So it took me five months to sell a five grand package. She bought a package from a woman online, $20,000 in 30 minutes. <laughs> and, when she and when she told me this, I thought to myself, you know, a lot of ignorant people would be like jealous or whatever. Oh, why'd you do that? No, first thing I thought was, what the hell does that lady know that I didn't know? Mm-hmm. I decided at that moment, and Earl Nangiel said this, I just never understood it. He said, your success in life is dependent upon your ability to sell. I dedicate the next three years of my life to selling. I, that's all I read. That's all I visualized. That's all I did. I, all I did was listen to sales recordings. I'd listen to my own. I'd find friends. I started a sales mastermind where other salespeople we'd get on, we would share ideas. I was researching Mr. Beast yesterday, just kind of learned about this guy. He did the same thing for three years. People don't know this. People just think that people just get the success. Yeah. He's been at it since he was 11. Mm -hmm. You know, almost a decade of insane levels of focus, insane levels. So that's when I dedicated my life to becoming a salesperson. My income, that's when I crossed my first 100 grand, or sorry, my, my 100 grand month. But that's when I, when I crossed $1.4 million in under, in under three years from just learning how to sell. Um, now, another huge lesson in my sales journey was this. I did this call with this lady, and I also think the universe made it, that this was her name. It was uh, Carmen Diaz, not Cameron Diaz. That would have been sweet, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was Carmen Diaz. And I knew within a second, uh, once Carmen Diaz came on the line, that um, she didn't have any money. Now, I'd already scheduled Carmen 30 minutes. And uh, so my paradigm instantly said, you know, just let's get this call done in 10 minutes and let's just get out of here. And that was my original attitude. And this voice, I swear to God, this voice went off of my head and it was like, this call is not for you. It's for her. Now, I've shared this story where a couple times I've teared up after because it changed my life so much. You see, prior to that moment, my biggest mistake was I would reflect the attitude of the person I was speaking to. Or my, I would reflect the ability or the potential or the capacity of the person I was speaking to. So I was only ever speaking to the paradigm. I was never speaking to the soul. That day, I made a committed decision that every person I would meet from then on in, I would give them a 10 out of 10. So let's say Carmen Diaz's life was, let's just say, a 2 out of 10. I was instantly going to reflect a 2 out of 10 to her, right? If someone gets angry at you, we can tend to get angry at them. We tend to treat people the way that we're treated by them. So I started taking the high road on everything, 10 out of 10. Within eight months, I earned $1.4 million after I started doing that. Start mm -hmm. to talk to the higher level, but you got to be courageous. You got to be courageous because that paradigm don't want to let you in. Does not want to let you in. Had this one gentleman once too. Now you got me on the sales stuff. Had this I love one it. gentleman once. Yeah, I had this one gentleman once too, who came on the call and he's like, he's like, I don't buy on the first call. 
And I said, oh, I said, that's okay. I said, well, today could be your first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and then I just conditioned the mind and then I was his first. Yeah. I talk about this a lot too. Um, it's fine with photographers. Um, you know, and, and that was a really great explanation, uh, uh, a visual, if you will, for a lot of people, if they, if they needed that to, you know, looking through that lens of sales as service. I mean, that's really what it means is to really guide them to that desire. They already, and this is what I tell photographers all the time, like people came to you for a service. They came to you because they were attracted to your work. They think you do a good job. Like you have already, like by that point of someone booking with you, they've, they've been sold into this desire. Like you've been able to do that. So you need to finish that process with them, not leave them hanging on the other side of that, because that is a disservice. You're not actually, you know, finishing the true culmination of that. Right. So a lot of, um, service providers or photographers, let's say like who are selling products and services and not just like digital images, that's where it gets a little clunky for them because they're like, that whole guilt comes in. So I love that you are speaking to that because I feel like that is of the utmost importance, especially with women. And it could have a lot to do with the way that we as women are programmed. There's, I mean, I could definitely go down that rabbit hole. There's a lot to say about that, but it's not doing anyone any good. And it's certainly not doing you any good if you are continuing to um, you know, carry that. But if someone is coming to you for a service, they, they, you know, that alone is the catalyst for you to want to finish that, that process and to guide them through that. Mm -hmm. Sales used to be one of those things that made me want to throw up. Like literally, that was the thing for me. Like I didn't even realize I had issues with this until I was put into a situation where I had to, right, quote unquote, had to sell in order to make a living at what I loved to do. And it brought up all of these triggers. And I find that most people, when that comes up, they just sort of run away from it instead of dealing with it. But I knew that I needed to, and I wanted to, I wanted to let that go. I want, like, I was like, this is obviously showing up because I got, you know, yeah, you this must, is not yeah, serving you wanted me. to let it go. Right. Yeah. This is not serving me. And I also really wanted to serve my clients better. I wanted them to have an amazing end result of this experience of working with me and handing over some digital images ain't going to cut it. Like I wanted them to walk away with beautiful artwork and feel really good, right? About that. Um, so I had to do that work on myself. I had to look at all of that and had that desire to change. And now sales is like my favorite part of what I do. Like it is so completely vastly different than what I had perceived it to be in the past. Um, and I love as many conversations as we can have about this for people, because I feel like there's still a lot of taboo around it, but I, I want, I want people to understand how amazing it can be when you are in that place and you are coming from a heart centered approach. You're like you said, 10 out of 10, you're showing up, you're showing up mm. to your highest good, right? Like you are stepping into your highest potential and an alignment and like nothing bad can come from that because it's energy at that point. Right. And it's not even just for you. So well, you don't yeah, even if you know can sometimes. remove yourself from the equation completely. Everyone exactly. will be better off. That's the problem with uh, with mankind in general. Everyone's just trying to get. Mm -hmm. Everyone's obsessed with getting. You know, people want to get so they can get. You know, that's I want to get this so I can get that. But what we got to start to learn how to recondition the mind to learn how to give so you can give. Exactly. I tell that to people too. It's like you, you, you know, they have all these problems, like these really, these um, obstacles, right. Of raising their prices. And I was like, well, if you really want to truly be of service, like the way this is a path to that too, because when you are making more money, you can give things away. You can be of more service. You can, you can then step into that other person centeredness. And it really needs to be that it can't, it's not about you. None of this. No, right? no, like even your goals, like if, if you go back to the financial freedom goals, like 
I said, number one, have a goal to increase your income. Number two, have a goal um, of saving and investing. Number three, have a goal that you, amount you want to give. And number four is, you know, eliminate debt or reduce your debt. Um, well, last year, I do, I, I'm just doing my taxes right now. Mm -hmm. um, I donated five times more money than I used to earn. Yeah. You see, so you, people, we have to learn how to, uh, freely give and graciously receive. And a lot of the ladies, they're, they're pretty good at the giving part, but the receiving part has to get, has to, has to, oh, yeah. their consciousness has to change a little bit in that. Like you, you, you want to get comfortable. You got to get comfortable with these ideas. Like if we were going to talk about habits, um, the number one habit for success is that failures don't like to do, uh, successful people have formed the habit that failures don't like to do. I'll repeat that successful people have formed the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. And the biggest thing that people do not like to do, the ha they do not like to talk to others about a, a subject that that other does not want to talk about. That mm -hmm. That's what they do. That's the number one thing. So it's the fear of criticism. It's like failures don't want to talk to others about a subject that that other person might not want to talk about. And if you think I'm wrong, just look at how many men and women go to bed every single night and with an elephant in a room for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, they just don't want to mention the thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to brush it under the rug. Well, so yeah. I mean, I think that people, I, Tony Robbins talks about this a lot too. Um, people do more to avoid pain than seek pleasure. 100%. And that's exactly what that is. <laughs> yeah, they, they'd rather die than than to, than to address it. You know, it's like, well, Jesus Christ said it a couple thousand years ago. He said, know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's that's a really great point. And I, I think that we can start to wrap up on that because I could keep you here all day talking about this kind of stuff. But I want I hope that you guys like hear a lot of the points that we talked about. But that one is really powerful. Like the fear of being perceived, of being criticized, of being judged, of, you know, it's keeping you, it's really keeping you the same and stuck. And if you desire something different, you really do have to be someone different who doesn't yeah, if they're, adhere if they're to that. Not, exactly. If, if, if people aren't gossiping about you and people aren't judging you, you're just not doing it right. Yeah. And yeah. you're playing small. Okay. You're playing small. You're not sticking out. Exactly. Be the purple yeah. cow, like Seth Godin always talks That's about. That's right. Got to be willing Just, to be different. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I loved all of this. Uh, like I said, I could, I could definitely go deep into all of this. And so this was really fun to pick your brain. Thank you for sharing all of that with us today. Thank you, Renee. Okay. So what are you guys walking away with? I want to hear your takeaways, obviously. I can't wait to hear what you thought about this episode, if this helped shift anything for you. Um, I think some of the takeaways are goals are important. You've got to know what you want. You got to have some clarity and a really great way to get into the practice of knowing what you want is to commit to 14 days of writing that down every single day and allowing what comes in to become more and clear over time. But you've got to have clarity on that without it it's going to be really hard to even know where you're going. Another takeaway is that we need to be willing to let go and release this past version of ourselves if we want to become this new version. So yeah, have the clarity and also be willing to let go of this old version of you. And then a really important takeaway that I hope a lot of you guys ponder and take to heart is the sales portion of this and how soul centered and other person centered it really needs to be in order uh, for many things to happen. But for you to really feel good about what you do. And I always talk about that too, that the whole purpose of all of this is to feel good. Um, Abraham Hicks talks about that a lot, you know, and I really think that in sales, it is 100% possible to feel good. There's no reason for you to be feeling guilty. If you are feeling guilty, it's it's programming, it's coming up, you know, so that you can address it and move through it. 
Um, and that that is the biggest step is to actually be willing to have an uncomfortable conversation, even with yourself about that, because this whole fear of being perceived, criticized, uh, spoken about poorly, it's keeping you stuck. And if you desire more for your life and for your family, you do need to be willing to let that attachment go because it is an attachment. So I would love to, like I said, hear your thoughts on that. Um, I hope this kind of opens your mind a little bit and maybe um, allow some other awesome, awesome things to drop in. And if you are a creative or a photographer and you know it is time for you to make some changes and you are ready, get on a call with me. Let's chat. Let's talk about how you can leave that version of yourself behind. Let's talk about what that looks like for you in the future. Get some clarity on what it is you actually truly desire. When was the last time you even allowed yourself to think about that? I'd love to help all the info on how to reach out, book a call. It's in the show notes. So you knew what to do. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.